I V M. नहीं बसंती इन कुत्तों के सामने मत नाचना वेल देर वॉज जय एंड देन देर वॉज द गॉजस बसंती एंड वीरू एंड दिलन कबर सिंह एंड द गुड ठाकुर हु वॉन्टेड रिवेंज and eventually gabar singh was thrashed to death with those customized spiked shoes hold on is that how shole ended it so did not hello and welcome to the longest constitution my name is priya mirza and this podcast is about the constitution of india and this season is about work and we are looking at toxic work spaces quite literally focusing on the bhopal gas tragedy and questioning what are our employers obligations to provide for a safe workplace what does safety truly mean and what happens if a lethal gas from a pesticide factory kills injures mutilates and ruins the lives of thousands hmm plus with work comes leisure such as watching movies and in today's episode we will build upon the menaka gandhi passport case and examine how it expanded judicial interventions in the 1970s so our first story today is about shole the year is 1975 and ramesh sippy directs his film shole aur isme drama bhi tha romance bhi tha and a crusty pair of shoes bhi the and a creaky jhula I have to admit though I haven't actually watched the film and in Sippy script Gabbar Singh is killed off by Thakur who kicks him into a nail stuck on the same pillar that Gabbar had tied him to when he chopped his hands off woof that makes Kill Bill look mild and Jain we look cry and hug each other yep that romance is something else and that's how the movie originally ended but the censor board didn't like this version at all and essentially as we saw in the previous episode the cinematographer ah oh, that's quite a mouthful act 1952 allows the censor board to decide what we watch and gives it authority over us movie watchers and treats us as infantile and incapable of processing deep stuff in this case they didn't like the idea that thakur took law into his own hands Oh we Indians can't handle such dangerous stuff. What if we actually entertain the idea of taking revenge and hiring charming local thugs to do that? So the question is why? Why do we have a censor board? And the answer is that it stems from a legal concept that's parents patrie which is that the state is like the parent. And this will come up in the next case we are looking at, which is the horrific consequences of the gas leak in Bhopal in 1984, which raised legal questions about employers' liability, transnational culpability, and most importantly, justice, along with questions of compensation and relief. So, Union Carbide Corporation (UCC) was an American corporation, and its fertilizer-producing plant had a malfunction, which released. tons of mic into the air and that gas leak led to the world's worst industrial disaster and unimagined human misery and grief apart from polluting the water for generations and thousands of animals and birds died as well making this both a civil and a criminal case and of course an ecological disaster so under the ipc the death and the injuries to more than 20000 people qualified as a charge under section 304 culpable homicide not amounting to murder but here's what the ucc quickly claimed first mic was just a mild irritant second that the disaster was not caused by negligence but a disgruntled worker a vindictive indian worker who caused the leak that the plant had been constructed and managed by indians in india and that no americans were employed at the plant at the time of the accident that basically they had nothing to do with the disaster and this is what the government of india did they found they had no laws to deal with something of the scale so what does one do one makes up laws as one goes along and that reminds me of beyonce's song if i were a boy if i were a boy i'd make the rules as i go yeah so the bhopal gas leak disaster processing of claims act 1985 gave the indian government the full power and authority to act as the exclusive 
legal representative of the survivors in all claims for compensation. And like the censor board, it's the same logic, parents, patrie, the state as a parent. And like parents, ostensibly protective to protect victims from being manipulated by lawyers and thousands of petitions being filed. But it also allowed the Indian state to speak on behalf of the victims and simultaneously silence them. In 1985, the government of India filed a suit against UCC in New York, USA. In what was a very weird argument, the Indian state argued that justice required the case to be tried in the United States on the grounds that our own legal system was backward, that we didn't have an evolved jurisprudence of tort law, that our legal system is really slow. And while all this is true, the Indian state as a parent petitioned the USA to say, hey, we can't cope with this, so you handle it, for the death and injuries and suffering of thousands of Indians. Okay, our third story today is about a prisoner. So in 1978, Sunil Batra was in jail, a convict facing death sentence. And going by Section 30, Part 2 of the Prisons Act 1894, as a prisoner under sentence of death, he was kept in a cell apart from all other prisoners. So Batra petitioned whether this permitted jail authorities to keep him in solitary confinement and in fetters. He argued that this amounted to his loss of liberty and denied him his right to move around, mix, mingle, chat with other people. And this was a violation of Article 21. By the way, fetters are chains which are usually around the ankles to restrict movement. And this is linked to the chapter we opened in the previous episode and that is the Menaka Gandhi case. And that was a case which was a major reinterpretation of Article 21. A case in which the right to life and liberty were expanded and used to test substantive provisions of law. So what happened in the Bhopal case? In New York, Justice Keenan dismissed the case on the ground that India was better equipped to deal with a case which dealt with an American company. And five years into Justice Keenan dismissing the case, there was still no relief. In 1989, the Supreme Court of India made a deal. They settled for $470 million in exchange for quashing all criminal charges against Union Carbide. In effect, a grave crime was reduced to a monetary compensation or international charity. Without a verdict against Warren Anderson, its CEO or Union Carbide. So just to give a global perspective, Bhopal was not alone. There were Chernobyl and Sandoz, other industrial anthropogenic, that's man-made, disasters all within a span of 23 months. So as we wrap up, the things to consider, the censor board altered Sholay, one of India's most iconic films. And even though the film was a hit, it doesn't change the fact that there is a filter between the filmmaker and the spectator. The censor board is the original filter, altering what we watch and how we perceive things, and significantly interferes with our fundamental right to receive a variety of opinions and perspectives. The second, in Sunil Batra versus Delhi administration, 1978, the court extended the constitutional light into the dark cells of a prison and held that even a convict is entitled to the precious right guaranteed by Article 21 and that a convict on death sentence in prison need not be chained and placed in solitary confinement. And lastly, the Bhopal gas tragedy underlines how the state laws and a corporation silenced the people who bore the consequences of the recklessness of an American company which got away with impunity and was supported by the Indian state. Did you like this episode? If you have questions or comments, please send them in. On Twitter, I'm at FundamentallyP and on Instagram, The Longest Constitution. Until next time, this is me, Priya Mirza, signing out. There's a quick survey to fill out on ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It lets us know a little bit more about who's listening to us. And you know what? We're going to do a few prizes. So, I mean, like, we'll do a random drawing of, like, maybe 10 people and we'll send you all some swag. Remember, that's ivmpodcast.com slash survey where you can fill out the survey. Hello, 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 everybody. It's been another awesome, great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On The Habit Coach, Ashton talks to author, speaker, business leader, and investor S. Venkatesh. 
They discuss the power of creativity and their philosophies about it. On The Wire Talks, the art talks to Wendy Doniger about her book An American Girl in India, Letters and Recollections from 1963-64. to 64. On Cyrus Says It's Cock and Bull, Cyrus Shreya's Harsh and Antarik discuss the claims of Delhi air pollution, reducing your life by 10 years. On Pulyabazi, Pranay and Saurav debate whether government policies have made the media dependent on advertising. And on the longest constitution, Priya analyzes the employer's responsibility in the Popal gas tragedy case. We got some exciting news for you. IBM Podcast has just launched its merch line and you should check it out now. Head over to the IBM Podcast website, that's ibmpodcast.com, and click on the shop tab to check out our first collection of t-shirts. Also, do follow us on social media. We're IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. That really does help. Don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms you're listening to us on. And also do remember, you can check out a number of our shows on YouTube. You can go to ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube to get a list of the channels that we are keeping active. We also are doing a small listener survey. If you could go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey to fill this out, it'll just take a few minutes and it really helps us out. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, SBI Life Insurance, Apne Liye, Apno Ke Liye. Jupiter, a digital banking app, Gap Gemini, get the future you want, Intel vPro built for business, and Intel Future Banal Wonderful with Intel-powered laptops. 